Welcome to part two, and in this video we're going to go through the process of how we animated this video in iClone 8. So this is the scene that I've got set up in iClone. So I'm going to break down um, how we've set this up and how we've added the animations and everything to this. So the first thing we needed to do was make sure that the resolution and the aspect ratio was all set up correctly. So we go to render video settings and make sure that it's on output size 1080 by 1920 instead of the 1920 by 1080 and it gives us the get view that you'll get on an iPhone which we want for things like TikTok or YouTube Shorts. We can see the scenery which is using some of the props that come with iClone so we've got wooden floor and for the background we've just got a book case and that's, and that's it and then we've got the turn table for the character to be sat on or stood on and then we brought in um, a prop that we had for a microphone. So, I see the character just sings. For the lighting, um, what I um, always do is basically I'll go through the scene and we'll go through the the stage, go to atmosphere, and then just come through uh, the different lighting setups until I find something that's close to what I want, and then tweak from there. On this one, I, th I would have just used average, gone into the settings, gone to where the lights are. So where are our lights? I would turn them on and off and play around with the strength. Make sure to always do this on the first frame so it doesn't add any keyframes for it until I've got something that I like. I've also added in a point light just behind him to add a little bit more of a rim light so you can... Right up from behind a little bit. Uh, for visual settings, um, we've got ambient occlusion turned on. Helps add some of those shadows uh, with the strength turned down to about halfway. You can play with the toe map. The toe map sometimes gives a nice effect. We've got global illumination turned on. And we've got tracing turned on. For the final animation, we probably uh, normally put motion blur on as well. Uh, for animating and that that's about it really. Um, I don't really change much more settings So I tend to try and use the Presets as much as possible and just tweak them and add in the extra lights that I need To that as I go. So the first thing for this would be to do the lip sync. So let's get into that So if I get rid of let's just get rid of all the animations That are on this character at the moment and I'm gonna get rid of the constraints as well so as you can see I've got the character's hands um, constrained and locked uh, to the microphone so we go to reach and we're going to get rid of the reach targets so now we've got the character ready to go I've dropped in the audio um, into the scene so if we go to Okay, so I brought in a billboard. So um, I think this was a video recording, so it's on the video. So the sound's in there. There's a billboard behind, but that can be brought in as a soundtrack or as a video or anything just to get the audio. We're just using it as a reference at the moment. So to do the audio, uh, the way I would set this up is we would go to Live Face. Okay, so to show this setting, I am now going to switch back from my virtual avatar to real me so that I can use the face tracking from my iPhone which I'm currently using to control this character so let's get that swapped over okay so um, what I want to do here now then is I'm going to go to live face on my iPhone app so I'm going to set up live face let's do a quick preview this all or nothing really got away you're driving me crazy So now, the easiest way to do anything like this is take it frame by frame. If you can sing the song all the way through, great. If not, it's just literally just a case of lip syncing all the way through. You can put um, use Aculate as well, but I find with the um, facial capture, you can get all the facial expressions uh, that you want as well. So you've got to do a little bit of acting. It sometimes helps to, like something like this, uh, to print off the lyrics, which I think I've done originally. So I would, on the timeline, on the timeline, I would press play. This old and nothing really got away, you're driving me crazy. 
and then I'd set the end frame, do a little preview. Nothing really got away, driving me crazy. Okay, so ignore my really bad <laughs> facial acting, but this is what I've got to do. So I kind of sit here looking a bit crazy sometimes doing this. So I've, I've practiced a couple times. Nothing really got away, driving me crazy. So I press record. Nothing really got away, driving me crazy. Right, that'll do for now, and then I'll go to the end of that that take, and then play the next bit. I'm not gonna do all of it. Let's just go. Do a quick preview. Okay. And there you go. And as you can see, you can work your way all the way through the song. I mean, if you can sing, if you know the words, you can sing the song all the way through, much better. I also think with this project, if I go to project settings, I've dropped the frame rate all the way down to 12 frames per second because I want to give it that stop frame animation uh, look but once you've got all these um, clips put together it's just a case of you can blend them together here and we can go in and adjust some of the facial expressions on top of that as well but as you can see this nothing really got away driving me crazy so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to revert back to Okay, so that's got the uh, the full lip sync now in there. Um, if I get rid of the motion and I get rid of the reach. And you press play. Let's go back to preview mode. There's no one to see. So what I normally do once the um, the facial capture has been recorded, I always find it's a few frames out. So I move the facial capture, so the expression layer, I would kind of shift up by about four or five frames just to kind of line it up with the audio a little bit better. So, I mean, I've already done that now. So that would have been around here. I would have just shifted it back and then that helps line up with the audio. But you can also offset the audio um, in like After Effects or whatever program you're editing everything together in so the next thing is posing the character and getting it set up for animations so i normally like to add some sort of like idle animation onto um, onto the character a good one for this is if we go to animation is the breathe motion so we can set that to the character and it just gives a nice little bit of a um, realistic motion what we can then do there is that's okay, let's do copy, paste. Be okay for now, so what I'm gonna do is select all them, merge those clips, flatten all. So you can see now we've got. Going that works quite well. So, the next thing we want to do is I'm going to get this microphone and I'm going to delete all of the animations on that. I've just got it moving around. So, what I did here next was I selected the character and I basically added reach, reach targets uh, so it held onto the microphone. This is just uh, one way of doing it. You could add in, um, you know, you could add in a full dance animation from Actor Core. Or anything like that but for this specific animation this is what what worked quite well okay so what we want to do is we want to get Lewis frame one and we want to add a reach target so we're going to go into let's go to edit reach target create a dummy that one so now we can move that in place Of the microphone, best we can. So 
so here we're just moving the dummy object, um, which is which is positioned in the hand. And I think I can pick the mic as a parent. So that if I move the mic, you'll see that the hand will stay onto that. So we're going to do the same again with uh, the other hand. So edit reach target. Set this hand. Create a dummy. So here what we want to do now is select the microphone. So the microphone is attached to the microphone stand, or actually might be even part of it. So now I'm just going to uh, just put in some random, just to kind of get the arms moving a bit. And then the final thing I would do here is then go through and maybe do some uh, tweak the animations to like the head. So like maybe there's parts of the song where I want him looking at the microphone uh, or looking up. So we can go into like the edit motion layer and we can tweak the animation so we can have him looking in different directions and things like that. So. I mean, you might be happy with um, the, uh, the the head movement that came from the uh, video capture, so that could be quite good. Or you could have the character looking at the camera uh, the whole time, so that so there's lots of different things that you can try to do to tweak. You can also go through as well, and you'll see that on the expression track, I've got some keyframes in here, which is where I've I've gone in and played around with his eyelids, so like making him. Eyes oh, open and close, so let's set them on to zero. So, yeah, I, I can close that so the eyes were open, but I wanted it to be a bit where his eyes closed. And if I didn't do that correctly in the facial capture, I can easily add those bits in as well. Uh, then, the final part of this is just adding in camera movements. What I tend to do here, let me get rid of, get rid of all the cameras that are in the scene anyway. So, what we got. So I'd pick an angle, create camera, linear camera. This will be my first camera. So in the timeline, we go to the switch switcher. And on that first frame, I'm going to select that first camera. We go back to the preview cam and then pick another angle. And I think with this video, I actually had one that was kind of swooping around. So I'll, I'll do that as well. Create camera. You can name the cameras as well so that you know what they're doing, what they are. And what we'll do is we'll set a frame for this one. We'll go to the end of the animation. To be fair, for all the, uh, the camera swooping motion, you would probably want to use an orbit camera. Camera, but we'll have a look how that looks. But for now, that, that will do the job. Let's have a look. Uh, we'll work okay and then what we would do then in the in the switcher so we'll switch to our switcher camera view and then just pick the best moments in to change the camera out so so normally it's on the uh, the beat to the song change the uh, to the chorus or the verse and things like that is a good time to change the cameras so let's switch to this view you can have as many cameras as you want or switch back and forth between the two but you can see quite how quickly you can put a, an animation like this together that is it that's um, and then the next stage from there is we go to render video uh you can either render it out as an image sequence with png or render it out with the video with the audio already um, attached settings here I would always just make sure the anti-aliasing is on high set it to range and that's that's it pretty much good to go so hopefully you found this uh, video on this workflow helpful um, if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below